Okay, so my talk at the Polyglot Conference, um, I am going to talk about how language is a path to global citizenship. And um, so I'm essentially, I'm just going to read right off of what I have on the website because that was the abstract that I submitted. And, you know, um, I, I actually had compiled a lot of research on this topic um, because of, you know, my one nonprofit organization that focuses on international education and two my business budding business that is Ling global and it's all about being a global citizen and language learning so um what i say here is um my presentation it will aim to ignite an uprising of young polyglots um, who will come in deeper, who come in deeper hues, language learning uh, zealots who can't at this moment even afford to dream how language learning will help them put food on the table and it is much deeper than a talk about race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status in language learning. Language acquisition and travel forces the world to transcend what you know and bridge cultural divides. My mission is to create global citizens and okay i'm just gonna hold it up here so i'm not looking down at the screen um global citizens and not only okay my mission to create global citizens not only impacts the desire um to give back to one's community once somebody comes back from a trip um and learned a new skill or you know visited a new place it also helps to see beyond the bleakness of daily life and poverty and so I think that that piece on it, it can apply to, you know, someone living in, you know, a third world country. Um, well, you know, I don't even like that term. Um, you know, emerging market and developing economies is, you know, just the best fit for, you know, what's happening in in global trends now. Um, that's that's an old term from when, you know, you had the U.S. versus the Soviet Union versus the United States and, you know, NATO aligned countries were called the first world and then the Warsaw Pact and, you know, USSR aligned countries were called the second world and everywhere else was the third world. And so it's actually not really a accurate term that reflects the current landscape of, you know, international relations and, you know, just global trends. So, um, so seeing beyond that, you know, you, you, you can see how like a language learning English, taking English classes can, can affect a child in Ghana and give them opportunities or, you know, a child in Belarus, they will have more chances and more opportunities to move up in society or, you know, a child in, you know, Costa Rica or, you know, Venezuela or somewhere, they're given this agency and they're given this, this empowerment and they're able to go off and do things that they wouldn't normally be able to do because of that educational opportunity and exposure to something that is new and um, yeah, they're just they're just given chances and they're given an opportunity. So um, I say that that um, once hopeless child goes home and wants to recreate the um, the environment that they were they had experienced when they were abroad or that they when they had this trip or learned this language they want to share. And so um, going back to my polyglot. Uh, conference presentation. This is the rest of it. It says, my lecture is for anyone seeking to learn a language and is at risk of letting a lack of resources keep you from being resourceful, which is my motto. Um, because I've had my life experiences um, and my life's perspective changed by exposure to foreign language. Um, and in my community, I created a desire to learn less commonly taught languages like Korean and Chinese and you know Ojibwe and Kazakh and you know Farsi and so then I go a step further and you know this is kind of what my research is now like on and how like you know these cognitive abilities that you then get can help you in other ways and you know they can make you more agile and in, in you know in old age and they can make you just more creative as you know an individual and make you more employable um, and you know, with so much focus on like STEM learning, you know, just, just kids learning science, engineering, technology, and math, I think there also should be an emphasis on learning a foreign language. 
there is but i feel it's it's sort of like that creative thing the way that like maybe art and music are seen as something that you can cut from a budget if the school is strapped for funding and I won't really want to use this as a platform to emphasize how being multilingual can spark a creative and philanthropic revolution and therefore spark the rise of the global citizen. Global citizen. So yeah, that's that's my presentation and I'll be staying at uh, it at the, the, the hotel where the presentation is going to be taking place or, or where the conference is taking place at. And uh, stay tuned to see the next video that's going to be talking about whether it's be, it'd be best to learn Slovenian or will it end up being like me learning Icelandic for my trip to Iceland where I don't necessarily continue to use it. Um, but it's a Slavic language and I love Russian so um, it should definitely be fun to Get to know some of the language and to present at the conference i don't know if i'm gonna be like overly excited or nervous but i know exactly what i want to do i want to get up there and electrify that stage and ignite this movement of intellectually curious global citizens who are out there just being bosses and i can't wait so that's going to be the 2018 Polyglot Conference in Slovenia, October 2018. And I'm super, super excited. But if you like what you saw here, and if you want to know more about the Polyglot Conference and my journey learning Slovenian or refreshing Russian or maybe both, um, please hit the like button and subscribe. And thank you and have a great, great, amazing rest of your existence and be a global citizen.